Hello, it's fantastic to see you all here today. I'm only going to do a short talk, but I want lots and lots of questions from you about space. Who I am is my name is Andy. I do space for all education and I teach up and down the country. I'm trying to inspire you about space, about how great it is. There's lots of things out there that are truly amazing. And we want you guys to look up and think, I want to be part of that. Because every job that's out there is a space job. No matter what job it is, you can be part of the space industry. And there's lots and lots of jobs out there that you can do to be part of our space. Ever you want to be, you can be. The important thing is while you're in school, you have to study the STEM subjects, which is science, technology, engineering, and maths. They are very, very important. There's also a secret little S on the end, which is a specialist subject. So it's whatever you love the most. Now, that could be science, technology, engineering, or maths, because they can break down into other subjects. Or it could be something completely different, such as looking after animals like a veterinarian, or you may be really good at something else. You decide what it is, whatever it is, you do the STEM and then you do whatever you love the most. That's really important because that will make the difference between you being part of the space industry and not being part of the space industry. Have that specialist. Do what you really, really love. Me, I'm an engineer by trade. I love engineering. I love making things. I don't know if you can see behind me, there's a rocket sitting there i love building rockets and launching them when i go to schools they absolutely love it we have lots of fun with water rockets and it's really great and that is a physics lesson to do water rockets so there's different things you can do to do science and be part of space but unfortunately my eyes aren't very good i'm going blind but it's not a bad thing it means that rather than me being playing with machinery, I get paid rockets because I get to do something else I love. And that's what makes me great is even though I have a disability, I'm still doing something fun that I enjoy. And that is crucial. That's what I love doing. And that's what I want to do. Some of you may have seen in the news that coming up over in America, they're going to have a solar eclipse. Now, solar eclipses are quite special. We don't get them very often. And they do happen around the world, but we don't get them very often in, in the UK. But in America has had them one. So I have a giant ball here. That's the sun. Quite a small comparison. But I have another little ball here. That is the size of the Earth in comparison to this ball. That's how small we are. Both. And there are stars. Our sun is a star and it is white. It's not yellow. It's how we see it through the atmosphere. Our star is actually only a dwarf star. It's small and one day it will grow bigger, but that's millions of years in the future, billions of years in the future. So don't worry, it's not going to grow tomorrow. It is absolutely huge. Now, the distance between the Earth and the sun is approximately 90 million miles. Now, because we don't orbit in a perfect circle, we do an elliptical. Sometimes we're closer, sometimes we're further away. On average, we're 90 million miles away. However, we have a moon as well. So I'm going to swap them over so I have a different one because make make this easier to see. So the big one's now the Earth and the small one's now the moon. Now, we're maybe 90 million miles away, but that is the distance between the sun and and the Earth, 108 suns will fit between the Sun and the Earth. 108 suns between the Sun and the Earth, yeah? And 108 Earths will fit across the Sun, across its diameter. That's unusual. Two 108s, well, how about I give you a third 108? And that is the distance of the Moon to the Earth, 108. So because these three 108 are so perfect, it means that when the Moon is in the perfect alignment with the sun, it blocks the sun because it's mathematically 108 times away and it's the perfect size to block it out. But because the moon is drifting away from the earth very slowly, how fast your fingernail grows is how fast the moon drifts away from the earth in a year because astronomical things can get to really detail. We're not going to go into that. It means that sometimes there's a ring of fire around the moon and sometimes there isn't because again, the moon doesn't fall in the perfect elliptical, but it is tight locked. So it's really important. That 108 is really crucial. And that's how we get solar eclipses because those 108 are perfect and it blocks the sun out perfectly. Now, if I put these out in distance, in accurate distance, the sun would be one end of my room and the earth would be outside. It would be that big because 108 of these is a lot. So you see that the moon, the earth and the sun are very important. And just because we're really small, doesn't mean they're not important. The other thing is the sun is 96% 
of the of the mass of the solar system. All the other planets and the asteroids and comets all make up the other four percent. So the sun is the biggest and heaviest thing we have. Now here's a quick question: Who knows what the second heaviest object is in our solar system? That's right, Jupiter. The reason Jupiter is second heaviest is because it's actually a failed star. It didn't get enough mass to turn it into a star, which sounds like oh, failed, but you know what? That makes it even better because now it is Earth's protector. Jupiter is so big and so heavy that about 1,200 Earths will fit inside it. That's how big it is. 1,200 little Earths will fit inside Jupiter. It is so big. And because it's so heavy, it has its gravitational pull, which actually makes the sun wobble a little bit. It also protects the Earth from asteroids, meteorites, comets, because it pushes, it pulls them into Jupiter, but pulls them away from the Earth. And that is really, really strong and really, really powerful. That's really good. And it only has around 80 moons. Keeps going up and down depending on when they classify them. But that's not the one with the most moons. But it's really heavy and it has a giant red spot. That's how we know it's Jupiter. And it also has what you don't see is that Jupiter, I'll use this one again, Jupiter does have rings, but the rings around Jupiter are dark. And the reason they're dark is because they're made of rocks. And we can't see those rocks. And those rocks are meteor, asteroids, comets that break up and then go into orbit around there. And we don't see it. The next planet is obviously Saturn. And we see those rings because those rings are made of ice. That makes it different, doesn't it? Ice is shiny. But because they're ice and some of the rocks go between them, so we get different colours depending on how the light reflects. However, Saturn's gravity isn't as strong. The reason being is, is because even though Jupiter is extremely heavy and makes the sun wobble, Saturn is very light. And if you put Saturn in a bowl of water, it'd actually float. Wow! Planet that would float. So the rings would sink, but the planet would float because ice rocks all sink when they go into water a little bit some of the ice would stay on top depending on how heavy they were but the heavy parts would go down you just see the tips of them how did saturns get rings made of ice well that's one of the questions we're not 100 percent sure on. about four billion years ago when the solar system was being formed and the sun was about four and a half billion years old there was lots of different things in the atmosphere around the sun and depend on how they created and formed, depend on where things went. And we think that the water was pushed away because when the sun was formed, it went boom and pushed like stuff away. So some of the heavy stuff, like the rocks, when you drop a rock in the water, it sinks right to the bottom, was too heavy to push away, which is why we have the rock plants at the front. And the heavier gases was pushed further away because it was able to push them further away and they created the planets and water was light so it got pushed away and therefore made the rings but we're not 100% sure exactly how that happened but that's what we think happened but Saturn just had a new study done about how many moons it has now I wonder does anyone there know how many moons Saturn now has because it's gone up a lot there is 146 moons around Saturn now. And these moons, we've discovered them because Jupiter breaking up asteroids, meteorites, some of these rocks are floating around and they get caught in either Jupiter's gravity pull or Saturn's gravity pull because they are quite close together, even though they're millions of miles apart, they are very close together. They go into the rings of Saturn and they clump together and they make new moons. So some of these moons are tiny, 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 but some are really big, like Europa. It does depend on things. And it's really, really important that we look at these different things to know how they change. How small is Mercury? Mercury is, oh, how do I, I think I have the size of it just here, just by chance. Diameter is 3,000 miles. Now the Earth, 7,000. So it's quite small. It's about just under half the size of the Earth. Now Mercury is getting closer to the Earth, getting closer to the Sun. It's days around 52 days long. It, take, it rotates so slowly and because when it's facing the sun it's really really hot so the sun's hitting it on one side but on the back side because it's going that way the back is really really cold so it's not the hottest planet but all these solar explosions and all the heat hitting it here 
gives it lots of dimples, but because the back has no heat, we often get things pulled into the sun because the gravity of the sun is so strong, it ends up with lots of meteor meteorite impacts on, on the surface. So there's lots of dents into it. Which planet is the hottest planet? It's actually the second planet from the sun called Venus. And the reason it's known as the Earth's twin, it's very bright and it's so hot because it's got a very, very thick atmosphere around it, which traps the heat in. And what generates the heat on the surface is it has lots of active volcanoes, which are constantly spewing lava onto the surface and sulfur, which is a, a very dangerous gas. And it's very smelly. So it smells like rotten eggs. And because this thick atmosphere, it traps everything in, it gets, it's the hottest planet. It's over 400 degrees hot on the surface because of that. We did have a probe that landed on Venus once and it lasted about 20 minutes before it melted. It's like an ice cube on there. It sat on there and just slowly melted away and then it was gone and it couldn't send any more data. Does that mean Neptune is the coldest planet? Yes, it is one of the coldest planet, Pluto, coldest large planet, but it's a gas giant as well. So the closer you get to the middle, the hotter it is because it's spinning so fast and it's gas, so it's holding that gas in. So because it's gas, there's no real surface. So yes, it is very, very cold. Do you believe in aliens? Yes, I do. I do believe in aliens because every star out there before about 40, 50 years ago, we thought that there wasn't many exoplanets and they're very, they're very hard to find. Now, because we've got new telescopes and everything like that, we're realizing that every star has planets. So if every star has planets. We can't be the only planet out there. We have discovered around 6,000 exoplanets and several hundred of them have the potential to support life. Some we have discovered produce gases that can only be produced by what we call a breathing system, such as us breathing out carbon dioxide. It can only produce the same way, like algae produces it. So we do think there is alien life out there. We just haven't found it yet. Maybe it's found us and it hasn't come near us yet. You've got to remember some of these stars are millions of miles away. And when we talk about a light year, it's looking at us, it's looking a year in the past. But if these are 70, 80, 90,000 light years away, when they look at us, they're seeing the dinosaurs. So when we look at them, we not, may not be able to see them because they could be already on the way. We don't know. What do you mean by a light year? That is a brilliant question. The light that's on the sun, how long do you think the light from the sun takes to get to the earth? When you turn on light in your, in your classroom, it's very, very quick. But you've got to remember, we're talking a few million miles that sunlight to travel to get to us. Hund hundreds of years. Actually, no. It only takes eight and a half minutes. So that's so. If the sun suddenly went black, we wouldn't see it for eight and a half minutes. If someone turned the sun off, when they turn it back on, it take eight and a half minutes for the sunlight to reach us. When you look at the sun outside and you can see it with cloud cover, don't look directly at the sun if you can help it. You're seeing it eight minutes in the past. So you're actually looking at time travel. So when we're talking light years, we're looking at how far that light will travel in a year, and that's a, a few billion miles. So it's easier to say a light year than it is to say, right, in this many billions miles, no, it's a light year. How big is the sun? The sun is 825,000 miles across. What was the first planet we found in the solar system? Right, the first planet we found was actually Venus and Mars. They were found very close together because they were very bright and very close to us. Venus being closer, Mars because it is a red spot in the sky. So we found them through telescopes that way. The moon, we never we never 100% sure. We actually don't know when the moon was first discovered, but we know it's, it's always been there. How do planets stay up in a solar system and not collapse? If you lay everything flat on the table and the sun in the middle, it's very heavy. Jupiter... It's a very heavy planet as well. And it slightly pulls on the sun because it's so heavy and it makes the sun wobble. So therefore, the, the gravity of those two keep everything away from the sun so it doesn't fall in because it's pulling us back, not into the sun. Jupiter's pulling us away. And the other planets are so far away, they're trying to fly away from Jupiter, but Jupiter's trying to pull them back in. And that what keeps us all nice and stable. However, there is a unique planet, and it's been declassified, and it's one of my favourite little planets, Pluto. We all know this planet, don't we? It's a little dwarf planet. 
on the edge of the solar system. It's got a little heart shape on it. Now, what if I told you this planet is really special? It got declassified because it's so small. It's smaller than America. So North America, this planet would fit across it, and America would be about this big around it. That's how small Pluto is. That's one of the reasons it's got declassified. Another reason is it has four big moons. One of them sits right next to it, and they both orbit around each other which is not how a planet's supposed to work. The moons are supposed to go around the planet, not the moon, not the planet around the moon. And they orbit each other. So Pluto's going, boop, 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 boop. and that's one of the reasons. The other reason that Pluto got declassified and got shrunk down is when you look at the solar system, you look at it like this. So it's flat. So we have the sun in the middle and we have the planets going out. Pluto is really strange. It doesn't do that. Pluto orbits like this. So it's up here where all the other planets are like this. So it doesn't act like a normal planet. It acts more like a comet. And that's really, really weird for a planet to do that. And that's what's confused people about it. But they can't say it's a comet because it has it's a rock. It has moons. So it's definitely a planet. But why does it go like a comet? What we think is going back a few billion years is this links to the planet Uranus and that is how you pronounce it Uranus. Uranus is on its side and it spins and we think that something really big came through our solar system not Pluto broke it apart a little bit and give it the moons and then it hit Uranus and not Uranus onto its side. Now we don't know what happened after that but we think it's probably linked to something with that but we're not 100% sure because it happened so long ago, billions of years ago. We're not 100% sure. But that's our best guess on why it changed. Really good, really interesting. So Pluto, even though it's a dwarf planet, it's a really special dwarf planet. Never forget Pluto. And that shows that gravity does affect different parts of the different planets in different ways, but keeps us all stable and level. How do you get up into space? Well, at the minute, one of the main ways we do it is, I'm sure you've seen it on TV, SpaceX are launching lots and lots of rockets up into space. Now, space is only 20 kilometers to the edge of space. Now, depending on where you are, you may have a city that is further than space is. So if I said, if you go to London, if you want to go to Birmingham, Birmingham is further away than space is. So it's actually quite close. And how many planets have gas in them? So there are four gas giants. Um, are they Jupiter, Uranus, Neptune, and Saturn? That's correct. Now, what's special about each of the planets is they're all very, very different. Jupiter is super, super heavy. If you put it in bath, it would sink. It's a failed star. But because of that, it makes it super cool because it protects us. It pulls all the asteroids, all the meteorites, and all the comets away from the Earth to keep us safe. So Jupiter is like a protector. It's our king. It keeps us safe. So Jupiter is really, really important. And it helps stabilize us in the solar system. Saturn is super light. And it's just been crowned king of moons. Actually, has 146 moons now. It's jumped from 96 to 146. So a lot of new moons. And some of those moons are so large, they could contain all sorts of stuff, including life. Then we have Uranus, which is really special as well, because Uranus somehow got knocked on its side and now spins sideways. And then Neptune is even further away, and that spins sort of similar, and that has a lot of moons as well, and it's quite smelly. So yeah, all of them are very important, but they're very cool. Is it true that um, the solar system once had a rogue planet? It may have a rogue planet. We don't know. There's a such thing that's called a planet nine or planet X. Scientifically, mathematically, we know there is something else causing gravity pull on the solar system. But for some reason, we can't find it. So there could be a rogue planet. We don't know, but there are rogue planets out there that don't have a sun. Their planets just floating around, waiting to get pulled into a solar system when they come close enough. There are about 6,000 exoplanets, and these are planets outside our solar system that have been discovered, and most of them are around stars.
What is the largest volcano on Mars? Olympus moons. It's the biggest one, and we can see it. When you look at Mars, you will see it on the surface. It's so big. It's four times larger than Mount Everest. So it's really, really big and really, really cool. But it's not active to our knowledge. If a like one of these planets that play around the solar system is going to our solar system, could it like knock off one of our planets? No. They spin round so so amazingly because of Jupiter and Sun affecting each other. Is Jupiter so heavy? It pulls everything around. So it, so Jupiter is pulling us away from the Sun. The Sun is pulling us into the Sun. If another planet came into that, it had to get past Jupiter, and Jupiter's gravity will pull it away from us to keep us safe. So it wouldn't hit us, but it could mean that it will shift us in our orbits a little bit because it would be another mass in the solar system. So you know when you drop a pebble in the water and then you drop another pebble, those ripples change, don't they? And that's how it could affect us, is it could affect those ripples. But we should be quite safe. And there's nothing will happen to us in millions of years. We're quite safe for a very long time. What is the biggest planet except for the sun? The biggest planet in our solar system is Jupiter. However, the sun is our closest star. So the sun is a star and it's white in colour, it's not yellow. It's just when we look through our blue clouds, our blue sky, it looks yellow. However, the sun is a small star, it's called a dwarf star. And about five billion years time, it will grow to be a giant red star. So the star is, our star is a small star and there are bigger stars out there. Why Scooty is one of the biggest stars out there, and it's about a million times bigger than our sun. What's the closest black hole to the Earth? Well, the closest one we can find is actually this, the centre of our Milky Way galaxy. Mm -hmm. So it's the centre of where we live, of, of the, the galaxy we live in. There could be others, and they're called micro black holes, but we haven't found them yet because they're very, very hard to find. When you look up in space or when you're in a dark room and you close your eyes and you try and see black on black, you can't see it. And because black holes suck in all the light, we can't see it. So therefore, it makes it very, very difficult to find them. But contact us if you have any more space questions. They'll be passed on to me and I will respond to them happily. If you want to check out my website, spaceforalleducation.com, please check it out. It's all there for you.